Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are going to explore Azure Arc. The Microsoft Azure Arc service extends the Azure's management capabilities beyond the Azure itself. Whether you are managing the hybrid, multi-cloud or edge environments, the Azure Arc gives you a single platform for all of them. My name is Navneet Kumar and I am a Microsoft Certified Trainer. The learning objectives of this video are What is Azure Arc? We will understand the key features of Azure Arc Benefits of using Azure Arc Real world use cases for Azure Arc And finally a demonstration on setting up the Azure Arc to manage the on-premises Windows servers Well, without any further ado, let's get started So what exactly the Azure Arc is? We can simply put it like Azure Arc is a set of technologies that brings the Azure management, governance and security capabilities to any infrastructure, whether it is your on-premises or in a multi-cloud environment or at the edge location. These workloads that are distributed across these different environments can be onboarded to Azure and can be managed under the context of Azure Resource Manager, which means that these workloads can either be monitored or can be applied with the Azure policies for governance and compliance from one centralized location. It's not only limited to this, but you can perform the automation using the Azure Automation Account or Azure Automation Services to these workloads distributed across the different environments. Well. This allows you to have a consistent, unified management experience even if your resources are running outside the Azure. Think of it as extending the Azure's control plane to your entire infrastructure. Let's break down the core features of Azure Arc that make it such a powerful solution. Number one is Azure Arc enabled servers. With Azure Arc enabled servers, you can manage both your on-premises and cloud virtual machines from the single Azure portal. Whether it's your physical or a virtual machine, you get it centralized management for these virtual machines. Next is Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters. Azure Arc lets you manage the Kubernetes clusters no matter where they are. They are in your on-premises or in any other cloud or at edge locations. You can deploy, monitor and apply the policies across all your clusters. That gives you a unified Kubernetes management experience. Next is Azure Arc enabled data services. It can extend the Azure's data services to non-Azure environments. With this, you can run the Azure SQL or Azure PostgreSQL hyperscale on any infrastructure. That too without needing to be in the Azure cloud. Azure Arc for Governance and Security Another key benefit of Azure Arc is the governance and compliance for the security. This lets you apply the Azure governance and security controls to your resources regardless of where they are. You can enforce policies, set up security baselines and monitor the compliance across the hybrid environments in a centralized manner. So why should we use the Azure Arc? Now that we have discussed some of the features of Azure Arc, let's talk about some of the top benefits of Azure Arc. Number one is consistent management. Azure Arc gives you a consistent management experience whether your resources are in Azure, outside Azure. It lets you simplify the operations and ensures that you are always in control. Next is simplified hybrid and multi-cloud operations. Managing hybrid and multi-cloud environments can be a daunting task. It can be challenging, but Azure Arc makes it easier by allowing you to manage all your resources in one single window. Cloud innovation beyond Azure you can have. This can bring the Azure's advanced services like Azure Kubernetes services or Azure SQL into any environment. Next is security and compliance with the Azure Arc's 
governance tools, you can extend your security policies, basically the Azure policies or initiatives to meet the particular regulatory standards or your organizational standards to ensure that the resources are safe and compliant no matter where they are located. Now let's talk about some real world scenarios where the Azure Arc is making an impact. Number one is hybrid cloud environments. For companies with both on-prem and Azure resources, the Azure Arc provides the seamless management, reducing the complexities of dealing with multiple platforms. You might be thinking like why organizations or enterprises go with hybrid cloud or still want to keep the uh, workloads in on-premises. Security of the data or the compliance is one of the important factor where the enterprises cannot move all their data to the cloud. So they keep the data in their own data centers and go with hybrid model. Multi-cloud deployment is also required to avoid the monopoly and also to take advantage of or competitive advantages of different cloud service providers. Many organizations use the multi-cloud models. With Azure Arc, you can unify the management of the workloads running in Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, or any other cloud. Next is edge computing. Azure Arc is also ideal for edge environments where devices and resources are distributed geographically. By extending Azure management to the edge locations, you can maintain consistency through policies, security, and monitoring. Let's dive into a quick demonstration on how to get started with Azure Arc. In this demonstration, I will walk you through the process of onboarding the servers to Azure Arc and applying the policies or monitoring these servers through Azure Arc. To manage the workloads distributed across the different environments, we can start with Azure Arc from the Azure portal. The service name is Azure Arc, where I will select the Azure Arc resources blade on the left. Here you see in the center that the capabilities of the Azure Arc are to manage the resources across environments, add scale, uh, scale faster with cloud native services and all. We have discussed already. Azure Arc resources for virtual machines or the virtualization hosts, we can also manage through this. Data services like SQL Server instances, managed instances, SQL servers, MySQL, Postgre, Data Connect controllers are there. IoT devices we can manage through this. We have application services for different types of apps like the web applications or the container app, API app management, logic app, function apps, license, license management for Windows Server. And then we have the management of the uh, multi-cloud connectors through multi-cloud connector. We can manage it, private link scopes or the custom locations we can specify. DevOps templates are also there for rapid deployment. Well, to onboard the machines, I'll go to the Azure Arc resources and machine where I will click on add or create where I have two options, add a machine or create a machine in a connected host environment, be it a Hyper-V or VMware vCenter. Now I want to add single machine, multiple servers or add Windows and Windows servers using the MSI, the Microsoft installer. I will go with the one machine uh, at a time to onboard for this demonstration. I will provide the resource group name and the subscription where I want to have these machines onboarded. The region in which area I want to keep them. So the Azure region I have selected is East US for this. The operating system is Windows. Then to connect to SQL or not, I can decide connectivity methods, public endpoint or if my servers are behind proxy, I can configure that. In my case, I'm not going to use the SQL at the moment, so I will uncheck this box. In the next, we have the physical location tags that I can mark because my workloads are distributed across the different environments. So tagging becomes very important to classify or organize these resources so that we can have appropriate monitoring or uh, policies or the automation rules applied on that. Somehow this resource group was not created for this. I will define the resource group for this once again. So Azure Arc resource group, for example. And now that has been taken. 
a powershell script will be generated which has the credentials uh, to connect to this as well of course i need to do the authentication not literally copied to this script but yes the information of the subscription id resource group tenant id you can see i can download this script or i can copy this code to the clipboard and run it on the on-prem servers to onboard them this is the onboarding script if i open it in the powershell iac to show you here you will notice that this script need to run into the IAC as an administrator first of all there is a if the if else construct that will check that whether it is running as administrator or not because it is going to make changes to the system and it is going to download this Azure connected machine agent which is Azure Arc agent is ACMA Azure connected machine agent so this ACMA will uh, let me connect to the um, as your arc and this is the location this invoke web request command powershell command you see that will be invoked to download this agent and install it on this machine the powershell execution policy is not allowing me to install this uh, or run this script basically because it's downloaded from internet and it's not digitally signed so as you see that the execution policy is set to remote signed for which the script need to be digitally signed and in this case it was not so I'm changing the execution policy of my server to unrestricted and then I am doing it for the current user scope. I will say yes to all to apply this execution policy and now I will execute this script once again. Now I will run it to trust this publisher. I'm saying that run once and uh, now the script has started installing the Azure connected machine agent as you see as per the verbose provided. So it will invoke that web request, download the ACMA agent. Once the agent is downloaded and installed, you will be prompted for authentication to register this agent with the Azure Arc instance. Well, I have authenticated with my account with which I have the access to it. And uh, this is my Azure portal where from I downloaded this script. I will close this window and uh, we'll go back to the Azure Arc machines and I can refresh this page where there is zero machines right now. In fact, this installation is going on. So I will have to wait for a few minutes and this can take a few minutes to discover the servers as well, depending on how complex your environment is or your server's connectivity to the uh, internet. Well, uh, once this installation is completed, we can uh, see the machine in the Azure portal under Azure Arc, where from we can do the management beat, update deployments, automation deployment through the PowerShell scripts or any sort of run books I want to execute on it, monitoring I want to do of this machine, I want to connect and manage this machine. So regardless where this machine is running, because it has an agent that is talking to the Azure Arc, so I have the centralized control for security policies, for the management, for the automation, and for the compliance to meet from one central location that is the Azure portal. Well, this deployment is completed for this Azure connected machine agent and now I refresh this portal. I will refresh it once again. Here I can see that Seattle ADM one machine is now discovered. It is connected from this uh, resource. It has been onboarded to this resource group and server 2022 is running on this machine. When I open this machine from the Azure portal, these are the details, the, uh, the inventory of that machine basically. And now from the settings, I can connect to this machine and manage it. Security extensions I can use. If I take it to the security, so I can use the Defender for Cloud to secure this server also. So we can uh, extend the capability of our Defender for Cloud service for threat management for on-premises servers. From the automation, I can use Azure Automation uh, Hybrid Worker or I can use the custom PowerShell scripts or Datadog agents are there or third party solutions that I also can use on these servers. If I want, I can use this AMA agent as your monitoring agent to enable the extension on the server so that it can be monitored through the Azure Monitor in cloud. 
So if I want centralized monitoring for my workloads that have been distributed across different environments, I can use the Azure Arc for this. Uh, Microsoft is going to retire the uh, log analytics agent or that was the Microsoft monitoring agent we used to use that so it is available as classic or uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, method which is getting deprecated and uh, soon the uh, Microsoft monitoring agent MMA will be uh, retired and its support will also be stopped after some time so microsoft is not investing into the microsoft monitoring agent if you are using that then you will have to uh, look for the azure monitoring agent and uh, for that you will have to use this uh, or, or the acma as your connected machine agent to connect your servers to monitor them this is the connect blade where from you can connect to your machines this is where from you can apply the azure policies uh, from the Azure, you can apply the or enforce the policies on the resources and uh, it tells you that whether the resources are compliant or not compliant as per the uh, policies. So this lets you maintain the governance of the resources. As I mentioned earlier that uh, the Azure Arc let you run your uh, distributed workloads in Azure as or under the ARM context or Azure Resource Manager. So you, it treats them like they are Azure resources. Well, these are the different uh, windows. You can do monitoring or you can see the monitoring of the jobs, actually what's going on basically. Now, for an instance, I want to do the monitoring of the onboarded server. So I can create a data collection rule. In this, I'm taking one of the application of Arc to monitor or collect the logs from the uh, on-prem servers or servers deployed in different environments so i will create a data collection rule in which i can specify like from which server and what kind of data i want to collect so resource i will specify i will add the resource when i go to add the resource i will find that resource over here under this azure arc resource group because the uh, agent is running on that this is crl adm1 machine which is my on-prem machine and now at the next uh, uh, page I can define that what type of logs I want to collect from the target server so this is the data source and now I go to this uh, windows event log what kind of logs I want to collect I can specify like the application logs or the categories of the application log be it critical error warning security logs or the system logs be it critical or error or warning logs then the next is destination where you want to send these logs to so I will be sending them, let's say, to a log analytics workspace, a hub where we can store the logs and then we can do the analytics on top of it. I will choose my subscription and the uh, log analytics workspace and uh, the logs will be ingested to this workspace from the machine that was selected. Now I will configure this data collection rule and uh, once this is done, it will take 5 to 15 minutes to set it up initially and will start collecting the data. That data you can find in the log analytics workspace. Either I can uh, wait for this, I can pause my video and resume after that or if I show you uh, interactively here the log analytics workspace where these logs are stored because from my uh, previous demonstration I have still some logs uh, available in my workspace so I go to this workspace and go to the uh, logs blade where from I want to okay let me open this workspace and logs and I will close this uh, initial window and will close this query hub here from I can explore the queries which are predefined saved queries you can say kql is the mode the log management is the option where from I can select the events that I want to see I will choose a particular time range where from I want to see that so uh, that uh, onboarding through the Azure Arc I did uh, little back I think in Jan it was done so I will choose that time frame and if I run this uh, query so I will be able to see those logs that I collected um, in the month of Jan though it was from the same server CRL ADM one that you see security logs so these logs were ingested from the on-prem server to this Azure Log Analytics workspace. 
that's how we implement the azure arc to onboard the workloads distributed across the different environments and we can do the monitoring we can perform the compliance we can do the management we can do the update management we can do the automation so it allows you to do the management of these workloads efficiently